Hello, we are back working on Miles. Uh, what's on my list? Put some shading in the tie so it doesn't look so flat. Maybe uh, add a bit of shading in the suit. The lettering, which is probably what I'm going to start with. And if we get time, we will start playing with paint pens. But uh, I said that yesterday and we didn't actually end up there. So I do like, actually, I just said I'd do the lettering first, but the tie is kind of quick and easy. So I'm just going to brighten up the center of uh, Miles's tie a little bit on the red stripes and maybe tone it down just a wee wee bit on the edges in the orange. So, and again, I'm going in with uh, using up some of my Stevenson, so rose red in the middle. Those things where you want it to be subtle because you don't want it to be like a really sudden and um, first I gotta keep in mind there's usually a bit of a shadow in a tie so I'll go like that. I'm just gonna put the faintest hint of white because I don't want it to go pink but I want it to be a little teensy weensy bit brighter. And more solid, so that is definitely looking pink, but <laughs> we'll see about that. So we're just gonna kinda loosely almost dry brush a little bit there, a little bit there, and look at the reference. Hmm. It's still sunny and it's bouncing off my neighbor's house, which is causing a little bit of glare, but I do think this is one of those things where looking in the uh, view, the little monitor thing on the camera actually is kind of helpful because it kind of is a little bit revealing um, as to where we're at. that up after that dries a little and then for the hints of orange I think I'm gonna kind of do the reverse and make a darker color for the edges um, a little hints of orange and Indian red um, just to get those kind of orange now instead of you know toxic tartrazine orange um, so. bit of extra Indian red um, as well. To, yeah. It's one of those things you kind of want to 
not quite go hippie. Super, let it go into a, a really brown tone because then that that's a little too much. But this is a bit of an odd one because I mean, obviously he's a card like that's probably too much. But I'll blend it out with some actual um, actual Hansa orange afterwards. But it's like he is a cartoon character, so you kind of want to have some cartoonishness. But then it's a semi-realistic rendering of the cartoon character, so you don't want him to be too cartoony. And uh, I'm gonna blend in this bit a little bit. That's a, just a wee bit much. I think I mentioned yesterday about the fly. He's still here. I don't know if you can hear him. I can hear the buzzing quite loudly, but I don't know if that actually picks up too much on Mike. do is put a little shadow going down this way because of how the you know ties kind of curl up a little bit and that sort of central part neighbor is uh, using the shop vac because you know it's Saturday afternoon so it's chore time so uh, anyways if that is annoying that is what that is um, so let's uh, kind of go over the red a little bit more clean up some of those edges and it's like I like the um, the dimension, but I also don't want it to look like it's a pink tie, so this is a little bit transparent. We'll see, I may have to go back and forth and back and forth, but I'm kind of trying to not be doing too much back and forth. a lot more realistic I think I don't know it's hard to tell in the viewfinder it kind of does kind of still looks a little flat and I don't I think our little friend just flew across the screen so if you saw a black thing doing that that's what that is and this actually also looks like it's a bit of a shadow from his uh, mic if I zoom in so like here, that kind of looks like the light's coming from, from, am I in the camera? The light is coming from there, forward, hitting the mics down and back. So that also brings the tie back a bit. Now, um, do I want to mess with his jacket right now? Or do I want to, um, let's mess with the lettering first. And, um, some Hansa yellow medium or middle and give our uh, John Deere letter colored lettering a little bit more of a um, go over there we go and I'll give just a touch of yellow let me of um, white to the yellow to make it 
It'll look, make it a little more lemony, which isn't necessarily what I'm going for, but I think I said before I want to put gold over top, um, so it won't be lemony in the end anyways. And um, so give it some solidity to uh, the yellow so that it's not, just so we don't have as much of the green showing through. At least that's the idea. the shop. I should talk enough to uh, try and blot out the shop vac noise. Um, so yeah, we've got, I've talked a bunch about Miles, uh, I've talked about, um, I've talked about Mouse Tin and Ratsville. Um, what else can we say? We've talked a little, we've hinted about uh, Gina who broke well, Miles would insist that he, she didn't break his heart. He doesn't care, but, you know, he would say that, wouldn't he? Um, what else would there be to say about this little dude? Um, well, more the uh, podcast in general. I'm due to put out the third episode of the Ricky B. Rat Ricky B, the Rock and Roll Rap Podcast Edition. Which is not the most creative title for the show, but, you know, I think a lot of the other variations were kind of taken. Um, so, yeah, that makes, that makes it better uh, on the lettering. Anyways, I can sort of give a little bit of, I won't give spoilers, but the idea is that a really big band for um, comes into the studio, one that had, you know, a lot of radio hits back in the day, and Ricky's cousin, Billy, is obsessed with this band, so Ricky, and they're doing, uh, for anybody, um, any of my viewers happen to be from Vancouver, perhaps you'd remember uh, a little thing C Fox used to do called Uninvited Guest, maybe they still do it, I don't know, I haven't lived in Vancouver for several years now um, but it was that you they would have an, a band do an acoustic short acoustic set like about half an hour in an undisclosed location but often it would be like a recording studio because Vancouver has many of those and the only way to get in was you had to win tickets and there would only be like a hundred tickets or something there wouldn't be a meet and greet at least generally speaking the band would kind of walk in wave say hi sit down, play their songs. Um, I think C. Fox usually, did they usually broadcast it? Sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't. Um, and there was one I was at when I was an audio student um, at my audio school. So anyways, we that's sort of the background for the episode and then there's a bunch of farcical stuff where there's an obsessed fan of the group um, and um, she mistakes Billy for somebody who works with the band and uh, is trying to uh, guilt trip him to get access, let's just say. So that's going to be the next Ricky B. Rat um, episode. And that will also help me to kind of introduce certain things that I need to be established for future um future episodes. Like usually in the big recording studios, like you don't fangirl if a big rock star comes in or whatever. You just kind of be really casual blase. Um, so we kind of get that established in this episode uh, because I it, it's kind of relevant information for a future episode involving Ricky's mama um, <laughs> and her obsessions and bad behavior. So, um, anyways, we will, I, ha I haven't actually written a script, but I have to record it tomorrow, <laughs> which is kind of a problem, but I do have on my phone where I was driving somewhere and I just, set, um, at a red light, of course, 
set it up on the voice memo recording thing and then just like talked for 10 minutes uh, giving all the uh, main beats of the episode so I just have to sit down listen to that type it up and then f um, flesh out the bits that I didn't actually say but yeah so we will have that I don't know if Miles will be in that episode probably not because um, you know it's gonna be like the uninvited the Fox uninvited guest things were always done kind of or I think always usually done the day of a concert so if the concert's at eight like the uninvited guest would be at like noon or something so you know that works for Ricky and his cousin Billy but Miles is uh, probably at the office uh, doing tax returns at that point um, I think for these thinner letters. I'm not going to add any more like paint with a brush. I'm just going to um, attack those with paint pens. Now I do want to uh, let's uh, work on the little cheese wedge here. Actually, while I'm you got that before I have that mixed in. I just want to see how. Oh, actually, I can get away with adding some of this yellow in. I hope that uh, shop vac noise isn't too annoying, but you know, I don't really want to be over there going like, "Ah, uh, hello, I'm like filming a video for YouTube." <laughs> yeah. So. We will just try to ignore it as best we can. Um, it'll probably stop soon. Um, and if it's super annoying when I go and listen to this, then what I'll probably do is uh, just speed this up and do a voiceover, I guess, uh, explaining what I'm doing. That would be annoying though, because then I have to basically talk through the video twice. Um, so, and why am I adding this in? Basically, to add a little extra texture, but also because I have the paint on my palette and I don't want to waste it. Which is not really the best reason, but it adds a little more texture um, to the flag. A little more energy. Yeah. And I don't know how much of this actually even shows because it's like yellow on yellow. Um, no, it's super, super visible. Anyways, so we've got uh, that story coming up in the Ricky B. Rat world. And I was kind of thinking what my next Paint With Me series might be. And there's a cartoon I did a couple months ago for uh, Ricky, wherein it's the girlfriend baby is wearing this really short, you know, like Kelly Bundy type of... Uh, bright red short mini dress and she asks Ricky do you like my new dress and then Ricky's eyeballs kind of pop out and he's like you know doesn't actually answer he, well he says yowza which I guess is kind of an out answer but his eyeballs like pop out and all that so I was thinking that would actually make a fun uh, little painting to do so that'll probably be the next one we do and for that one <laughs> I would kind of have it uh, right from the beginning. Well, not quite from the beginning. Like, I'll spare you guys the gritting process because that's kind of boring. But um, but basically, once the grid is on there, then I would take the uh, Xerox of the cartoon that's kind of cropped down to the, just the areas I want. And... Um, Sort of film drawing it on 
And what I would probably do is, uh, kind of actually, I thought I would be lazier, but I actually kind of like this whole, like, paint for an hour a day and film it type of thing. I don't know if I would do that every single day, but a couple times a week I think it would be neat to kind of have that as a practice. And then, but I may not necessarily do it like one project start to finish. I may kind of like bounce around between a few. So, um, yeah. Plus then, like I also do a lot of printmaking as I've uh, mentioned, so it'd be kind of neat to um, neat to also um, have some like print with me. Uh, aside from like the monotypes uh, shorts that I've done where I've like filmed it but then sped it up. Uh, kind of neat to um, show some of that process. Although right now in terms of an actual paint, uh, printing press. Oh, hey, the fact means stop. Thank you, neighbors. Um, but I should probably tilt this down because I'm working a little lower. But um, so for right now, um, the open studio I go to when I do uh, my printmaking, it has the press and all that. Um, oh, we aren't doing. Um, there isn't like a printmaking open studio on right now. There was over the summer, but uh, we were talking about doing it again in the fall. Um, it's just not up on the website to register yet. So um, anyways, in terms of using the actual printing press, I don't have currently have access, but here's the thing. Um, you can kind of do virtually the same thing with jelly printing, jelly plates, and I do have jelly plates. And then you don't need to press. So, oops, I just knocked over a water ball, but that's okay because it was closed. Um, so I could show um, that process. Um, yeah, okay, so I've used up the yellow paint there. Um, now, back to the orange. Back to orange, what was I? Oh yes, the cheese wedge. Lost my train of thought for a second there. Um, not that I had it in the first place. Anyway, so what I'm probably going to start doing is maybe do like, once this painting is done, I may do like three videos a week or something like paint with me print with me or whatever so focusing on different process so anyways i'm gonna lock in the cheddar color because you know we don't want the dark green going through it's going to look moldy and yes some people are into uh, blue cheese that has mold in it but some of us really really are not so we want, and Miles is trying to get votes, right? So he wants his little wedge of cheddar to be as appetizing looking as possible. So definitely not with any blue mold in it. Which means I'm gonna have to add a little touch of white to um, make it just a little bit more opaque. Say a little touch of white, I mean like 50% white. <laughs> hey, now we've got an airplane going over. It's like, name the random noise in the background. Airplanes and shop vacs and we have yesterday motorcycles. Calls from telemarketer or scammers pretend to be telemarketers. We've got all sorts of stuff in there. So solidify and also I'm gonna mess up or not mess up mess with I think I mentioned this in the previous video where you know you get the politicians who wear the little American flag or in Canada we have that as well little maple leaf pins 
on the lapel to show that they're very patriotic, but Miles is going to have his wedge of cheese there. Um, and do I want to okay, just put the slightest little bit of, oh, that's way too late. It's a shiny tie, you know, it's either silk or it's probably polyester, pretending to be silk. There we go. Actually, that's alright. Make it something that's a little in between, because that was a little orange sherberty. Let's go back into the hands of orange and blend that a little bit, smear it around a bit, that mid-tone back. at the bottom is too wet so I'll just smear stuff around if I'm trying to add anything so I'm going to go back in and fix what I just smeared. There we go. And we do not want that green showing. Even if it means I have to put in a layer that's opaque white and go over it but I think we're good there. So um, the list then said the uh, unflatten the suit a bit. So I'm going to get a different piece of palette paper because this one's all hoovered up. When I say palette paper, I mean wax paper. <laughs> I think I showed the other day. Because I'm lazy and I'm cheap. And I'm not paying art sc art school or not art school. I'm not paying art supply store prices for palette paper, which this does the same thing. Uh, so, if I remember correctly, Miles' suit got some cobalt blue. Well, the hue version, not actual cobalt blue. That's got some. Might have had thalo cerulean blue, but I think I'm going to basically go with cobalt. And somewhere in here there's a tub of ultramarine blue. So we're going to mix up a little bit in there. It started work, working from the light out, I think. It's probably going to be the smartest way to do this. And then we'll just kind of go darker and darker. My dad was over today and uh, I showed him the painting and one of the things, first things he says, the, the lapel is kind of, um, kind of fades in. And I'm like, yeah, well. <laughs> a little green, greener than I wanted, because I used some Liquitex Brilliant Blue, which isn't mixed, but um, and some Cobalt Blue Hue. I do have real Cobalt Blue, but I'm trying to use up other stuff. Yeah, there we go. See, the Cobalt is um, slightly more purplish versus uh, greener, so it's 
still uh, not quite well on the screen it, um, on the monitor screen it looks very much the same color but now the reference photo of a certain politician it's a darker suit and it's kind of well it kind of does look flat because this is probably in terms of the uh, hold this up again we can fold his head back. We don't need to see his head. Certain of my friends from California will be like, yay! It's like, it's not decapitating him. We're just, who cares? We're trying to focus on what's actually important to Miles, which is the uh, bodysuit reference. So, probably I'm going to assume it's probably, well, Lord knows it's an expensive suit. We would assume so, because he's a billionaire. It's probably wool. Um, it's, or a wool silk blend or something, and it's probably, you know, depending on the tailor, but uh, not that I am any expert on, you know, tailoring or whatnot, although my grandfather was one, but he died in the war, so, you know, it's not like I ever met him, but I do, I have occasionally sewn my own clothes, and sometimes when you're working with stuff like that, you'll do what they call an interlining or an underlining. Uh, certainly if you do this with, if you're sewing with velvet, this is almost required to make it usable. Um, where you like get some pre-shrunk flannel and, and when I say pre-shrunk, I mean you wash it like two or three times in hot water and put it in the dryer at the hottest, hottest temperature because you want it to suck in and really tighten up the weave and make it stiffer. It adds a layer of warmth, but it also makes the fabric stiffer, so it hangs more almost like a board. Not quite. I mean, then if you're, of course, if you're a woman and you're putting in um, seaming and like princess seams and all this, then it holds the body better then. But uh, one presumes that he doesn't have princess seams in here, but he may have, he probably has interlining. Um, so that fabric is going to hang kind of straight, but there is a little bit of a wobble in there. First of all, I'm going to test and see what color this is. Okay. It's a little bit deeper, but uh, we will kind of scrub it in a little bit deeper sky blue. And actually, I kind of do want it more powder, so uh, I would probably go over and blend a little bit, though. And the lapel... Uh, we want it a little wider. We probably all have to remember to put in a bit of a shadow on that pin. Um, so we kind of want it to look a little more 3D. And to kind of... It's uh, a term I'm looking for. It's not scumbling, but it's something like that. But basically, Kind of like uh, scrubbing in a little bit with the brush to do that, and it gives a little more tonality. Um, you can s in the viewfinder, you can sort of. I keep calling it the viewfinder. It's not a viewfinder. It's a monitor screen. I may have to stand for this because it's a little hard to reach, but I think you can kind of see the multiple tones. But I'm gonna zoom out so we can see his whole torso. There. So. Um, so I'm going to put this kind of lighter sky blue kind of all over. And I will be the first to admit that um, fabric drapery is something I need to work on a little bit more than I have. Uh, it's kind of an ongoing thing with uh, Noah's Archipelago too, is um, you know figuring out where the shadows would be on Noah's uh, Noah's shirts. Um, and yes, I am bracing my arm up because my, my shoulder is a little messed up. I think I mentioned that before, but also I went to the gym yesterday morning. I lifted weights. <laughs> that sounds so much more impressive than it actually is. <laughs> it's like on the, uh, they're not Nautilus anymore, but like, you know, Nautilus style machines where they've got the weight bars and it's all pulleys and 
you're not using free weights. Anyways, um, you have like one that's like an overhead shoulder press or a shoulder press. And I would like to brag about how heavy I lift on that, but I'm on the very first setting. And the first set is like eight pounds. And I only managed eight reps for one set. <laughs> call the Mr. Call the uh, powerlifting championships. I'm gonna be take. I'm gonna be taking charge from now on. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it is what it is. The important thing is that in the future I will be. It is what it will be. And that will be heavier than what it currently is. Actually, I mean, this uh, this is a little bit much up there. I'll, I'll lighten that up. But this is kind of... I'm, I'm liking the way this is looking because it's adding a little more dimension into the color. And also kind of that scribbly thing. It's a little... it's less flat and uh, more interesting. Plus, I think that will be that will jive better than if it was like really flat and smooth and then I went in with paint pens and did scribbles and cartooning on top. That would look weird. Anyways, let's get the little bugger's shoulders there. Uh, this is almost making it look like he's wearing, like his suit is like a silk, shot silk, you know, where you see one color from one angle and then uh, like, I think certain organzas do that, but uh, taffetas do it where the warp and weft threads are a slightly different color, so you end up where, uh, you know, you get a different shade showing from one angle than the other. Usually they do that effect with, like, totally different colors, so it would be, like, black in one direction and red in the other or whatever, but... about to add some ultramarine blue and darken this up a bit, so... Let's see how that ends up looking. It may be a disaster. <laughs> the fun thing is that when you really look at it, ultramarine blue is a more reddish blue. Like it's a warmer blue than say, you know, Prussian blue is a more green. Or no, I guess either way from blue, they're warmer colors, you know, because green has yellow in it and purple obviously has red in it. So ultramarine blue leans more towards um, red blue or red violet um, and like Prussian blue um, and cerulean go more towards green tones. So either way they're warmer, but... Lavender going on with like two different palette knives on the go. So yeah, this is gonna be a little bit more, and that's actually almost closer. Not as white, but it's uh, in terms of uh, hue, it's closer to what was on there already. suit is becoming a little less like a 80s uh, wedding tuxedo. <sighs> I 
it a little bit more like a Miami Vice jacket, maybe. <laughs> we'll see how the color ends up going. some of the harshest. Yeah, I will want some areas that are indeed in deeper shadow. But, uh, some of them are a little too outlining, you know what I mean? So. I'm sure there is a breast pocket there, but I can't really see the outline very well, so I'm just going to kind of erase that out. I don't feel like giving him a pocket square. That's funny. I don't know that shows up so much on the camera, but suddenly this little cheese wedge is like looking fluorescent. <laughs> so you've got that extra uh, brighter blue, I guess. So that's how it kind of how the cookie crumbles in color theory, right? And now I'm going to add even a little more. Just get another sort of darker mid-tone blue. Very helpful actually to have the viewfinder, I think I mentioned before, in terms of the mirror effect, but also because that's uh, more, z well, obviously if my nose is right in here I can uh, see the details a little too much, so it kind of helps me see what's actually um, being uh, shaded or not. Um, go too too much with the but this is definitely adding some more dimension into the little dude's suit so it makes it look a little more real too come in with the thin much I mean this is a um, it's a number it's my number five flat I'm gonna come in with the smaller flat and uh, do some scratch scratch scratching um, along the, underneath his lapel so it has um, some shadow but not like a ton of shadow um, Especially keep in mind where the um, you know the light is probably in front into the to his left. Um, then obviously, like 
this area is going to be darker, right? As it as he disappears behind the podium. His armpit and underneath here is going to be darker. Just a little bit. Yeah, it looks a little more going forward, right? And this one's a bit of a hard spot because the top of his lapel is going to be getting the light, as is that shoulder, right? So, um, but looking at the reference, Mr. Reference does have a teensy bit of. that sort of thing going on. And we kind of also want to have a little bit like not making it into an outline because uh, if I'm going to do any outlining that would be with the paint pens but there is going to be a shadow sort of as the color as the lapel becomes the back collar of the jacket, right? Um, and on this side, there's definitely shadow because his chippy little cheeks are in the way of the light getting to the, to the bear, so. Do kind of the same thing on the bottom where where we're adding some dark tones and kind of scrubbing them up a little bit. And you know, in the brightest part, kind of make it more almost like a uh, dry brush type of thing. And same here. kind of want to, I mean, the cloth would not without, trying to not make it look too much like an outline, but, you know, the edge of his jacket is going to wrap around, which means the lightest part is going to be like next to the apparent edge, not on the apparent edge, if that makes sense. Like that, kind of. And the idea is the mic is in front, so it's blocking off the view there, although I should probably make that a very clean line on his lapel. Um, do just a little bit like that to give a hint that there is a seam there, right? Um, generally speaking, uh, between the two points, so I kind of want to scumble a little bit. I, I think scumbling is the name for what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, going in with the dark. And also I need to up a little bit um, where his arm is going 
and behind the um, behind his flank. And obviously, it's a, you get situations like this, and it's weird because there's probably like 50 lights aimed at him, right? Um, but they're trying to make it look like there's one consistent light source. There are at least one consistent light direction. This is also an area where we're adding a little bit more gray underneath his collar to make that read a little bit more as white. Right. Um, but definitely his jacket looks a little more uh, realistic, I think. I'm just going to kind of like do this, which is probably a really annoying noise, I'm sure. I do want to add a little teensy bit of white because right now, at least to my eye, it's looking a little like, you know, the Western uh, jackets where they've got the yoke on the sh front shoulders, like the front yoke. So I'm going to soften that a little bit and blend it out. Uh, where's my other blue brush? Light of sky blue. And I just kind of add this kind of a sky blue around. This is what's kind of hard when you're um, changing color from a reference because it's like, ah, I'm making this a, a light blue suit, not a not a navy blue power suit. So, at the very least, this seems to have better energy now than did at the start of the video. And I would totally say that even if it wasn't my idea to do this, and if I wasn't. Uh, lazy and not wanting to have to repaint his suit again. Yeah, yeah, that's totally an improvement. I totally made it better. <laughs> but it also kind of matches how uh, Miles's face is because we've got some very obvious brush stroking and some, um, you know, that sort of thing going on. So we kind of time at the uh, viewfinder. I keep calling it a viewfinder. It's not a viewfinder. The little monitor screen on the um, camcorder. It's certainly a livelier looking jacket than it was at the beginning, so we call that a victory. Good enough. Now, um, what else is on my list? Paint pens. We will get to that. Um, I'll be going for time. I think we are. Mm. Very close to an hour. 
Is this going to be the second video in a row where I promise paint pens and don't get to it? It might be. Uh, but that means that probably tomorrow all we're doing is paint pens. Now, I think what I'm going to do now, though, is first of all put some gold on those letters. They were, yeah, they're dry enough. Um, so we get our base of our gold for miles. Excuse me while I st stick some paint. Um, paint knives in my little water jar and I got paint on my... I've got a little one of those boom arms for when you want to film with your phone. That's what's uh, in behind and I just goobered it with blue paint so it's been baptized. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and um, Stevenson Acrylic. <laughs> a little bit of blasphemy there, I'm sorry. Uh, but it's also an inanimate object, so it wouldn't be a valid baptism anyways. Um, anyways. Before I get myself in too much more trouble. Um, <laughs> let's put some gold on the letters and we will call it a day and then tomorrow in tomorrow's video well I might actually I might play with some paint pens on here today and then tomorrow we will muck around with the rest of it um, This is um, Artist Loft gold paint, acrylic paint, and it is their, that's supposed to be their level three professional. Um, it is not showing up very much versus, I know I've got some uh, golden and some old Steve, you know, Stevenson. I am still brand loyal to a brand that doesn't exist anymore, but. I swear their gold paint showed up better. So tomorrow we may go over it with one of those instead, but we are at least going to get an initial layer of gold on. And how much of this actually looks like anything in the camera, who knows. <laughs> the annoying thing with gold is unless you're actually going to foil it, and no I'm not going to foil this, um, sometimes they just end up looking like a kind of shimmery tan color. Yeah. Um, like I'm, I've mentioned that I do printmaking, I often use Akua inks, and I love Akua, generally speaking, but their metallics are terrible. Or at least it's like the silver one, If unless you really goober it up and have good luck with the press, because that's the other factor, what you get is the faintest of grays, and it doesn't really look uh, metallic and then the gold basically like don't even bother because uh, all that happens is you get a very very light tan um, again if you goober it a lot you can make it look like a shimmery tan but I no longer I don't even I used to try and get things to look metallic with the Akua um, when printmaking and now I'm just like nah if I really care that much I'll go in with a gold marker afterwards um, so, we may be doing that, but at least we're getting a first layer of shimmer. I mean, from certain angles it looks sort of kind of shimmery gold, but not like m actual gold gold, just, you know, shimmery in light beige gold color, you know. It's kind of like, um, you know, some of the car colors. Harvest. My mother had a, um, a Ford Windstar and she bought the Harvest Gold color, which it was not gold. It was beige. It was shimmery beige. But she would get very, very annoyed if you told her it was beige. And it's like, well, I'm just saying what the actual color is. Like, they can call it Harvest Gold all they like, but it ain't gold. It has a little bit of mica flex or aluminum flex in the paint. I give it a tiny bit of shimmer and it's beige. And I 
hear that fly running around. Maybe he thinks he's actually going to get some actual gold. Good luck, buddy. Good luck. So there we got the start of the gold in there. And yeah, let's, because I've been promising it, let us muck around with a little bit of paint pens. So we've got the uh, hot pink on there. Um, you know what I think I'm going to try. Somewhere in this bin I have. Well, I have a lime green. Let's see how that looks, right? I'm gonna shake it up a bit. Uh, the other, the one annoying thing, I might as well show you guys what I'm doing. But it is a, oops, that's the underside of the desk. Watch while I hunt for, there. So sometimes with these markers, you have to like tap them to get the uh, paint to actually come out. Um, this one didn't take too many. I've had some where I was like bashing it for like five minutes. Um, but yeah, let's zoom out a little bit again. And here I'm like, I'm not, I know that my hand has a little bit of a shake, so I'm actually not even try. I'm kind of deliberately trying to wiggle to make it uneven. Because, you know, sometimes it's best to, I mean, that one's kind of extreme, but, you know, kind of work with if you've got a, a shake or whatever, and I've had one in my hand since the 90s. It's kind of good to deliberately work with that. Um, uh, so that way it looks intentional. Yeah, some people get too worried about trying to make things perfect, and it's like, well, <sighs> even if you look at Michelangelo or uh, Rembrandt, and you look really close, it's not perfect. Like, um, there's a Rembrandt painting, I think it's called like the writing on the wall or something like that, but it's like a biblical scene and there's this king, he's wearing, uh, you know, his robes have a lot of gold on them and whatnot. Yeah, he could go and do all the detail, like guys like Holbein used to do that, to the point where um, we now can analyze Holbein portraits to find out what like the fashionable patterns for ladies doing black work embroidery on cuffs was um, in the time of Henry VIII because he did it that fine detail and perfect and meticulous. So, you know, it, you can do that if you want, but, you know, Rembrandt obviously had that kind of talent he could have as well, but in the King's, um, in this writing on the wall thing, if you look, he's just taken a brush and kind of very similar to how I was uh, kind of uh, scratching in detail on Miles's um, the folds here. I was just going duh, 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 duh. literally. You look closely. That's what um, Rembrandt did with shades of light brown and yellow to give the effect of like a richly, heavily uh, jeweled, gold embroidered cloak. But when you look at it, it's actually just scribbles. So you know. You're not going to have perfection. Perfection would be boring anyway, so, you know. And if you're like me and you have a bit of a tremor, you know, like you've probably noticed, um, sometimes I steady my hand with my other hand. Sometimes that doesn't help, but stuff like this, uh, screw it. I'm like going to purposefully, um, I'm not going to try and stop my hand from shaking, and at times I will kind of, 
do something like I just did to add it deliberately, right? So we're going to do some of that sort of stuff. Obviously, once the gold is dry, I put a couple more coats. Um, I'm trying to think, should I go over the corruption you can trust with the lime green? I think I will. Um, and on this, I'm kind of putting my pinky down. Um, but I'm also not worrying about being super precise because I kind of want all the colors to show. Because then it becomes like a um, deliberate design choice, right? Not like a, oh, you've got a shaky hand. Like, yes, I do have a shaky hand, but also this is deliberate. And this isn't straight, it's going this way. But that's okay. That's just Miles' way of signaling that he is indeed going to be a crooked politician if uh, the denizens of Ratsville are dumb enough to elect him to the local office. So with that then, let's also put that same green on for Ratsville City Council. scratchy scratchy marker on canvas noise. I'm going to use a paint pen on the cheese wedge as well to do some detailing but that will be in tomorrow's video kind of like with his uh, cheese lapel pen. Another one, excuse me while I stomp this until the ink starts coming. There we go. Uh, this is a dark green. And I'm gonna kind of go around like that. And if you try and go fast, sometimes you go a lot straighter than if you're going slow. Um, I should blow, blow, blow. I'm just putting like three lines down the side. Um, so. into a dollar sign. I may go over that later so it's a little more subtle. Like go over it with the uh, yellow and the lime green. Um, and Triangles here, little triangles there. I'm going to see what color that green dries, but I may do a similar kind of pattern all around or like a band. Um, and you know what, I think we are going to call it there for today. Um, 
because I'm going to plan out a little bit more what I'm going to do on his podium. And I'm very tempted to do similar outlining like this in his suit and elsewhere. Um, but I'm going to sleep on that. And I think this video is already hitting the hour mark. So we will call it there. Hope you've enjoyed uh, today's little bits of painting. And uh, we will talk at you again. Well, in this case, tomorrow, because I'm going to be doing a video a day until I finish this guy, even though I said I wasn't going to on the first day. Um, but that'll just be a couple more days. And then uh, after that, after the couch and exhibition, we will settle into a new kind of three times a week. This is the plan at this point. Anyways, talk at you next time. Bye.